So this is where we left off in the previous video. If we play this, we can jump our player on the scene, but we want our camera to follow the position of our player. Let's select camera, go to add component, and here we will make a new script. And let's call this camera follow. Hit create and add here and it will automatically assign this script to our camera. And also let's drag and drop this script to our scripts folder. Now let's open this up inside of the visual studio. So the first thing we need is the target which our camera will follow. In our case it will be player. And the next thing we need here is a vector 3 and let's call this one offset. It will be the difference of the position from the position of our player. And the next thing we need here is the smoothness of the camera follow. How smoothly you want your camera to follow the player. And this seems to be a very good value. You can always change this to whatever you like. Now inside the update method, we will get the position of both our player and the camera. So firstly vector3 and call this game pause and set this equal to transform.position. Another vector3 and let's call this player pause and let's set it equal to target.transform.position. and another vector 3 for the position we want to be at and let's call this one destination pose or let's just call it desired position and let's set this equal to the position of our player so player pose Lastly, we will make another vector 3 which will interpolate between the position of our camera to the desired position. So let's call this smooth pose, set this equal to... We will use a lerp function here which linearly interpolates between two points or in our case the positions. So the first one will be the camera position, so cam pose. The second word would be the desired position and lastly we will give this a smoothness for time. So type in smoothness here and, and now we have to assign this position to our camera. So transform root position and let's set it as equal to smooth pose. And here we will also plus the offset vector that we created up there. And I'll show you why we are using this in a minute. So let's save this and head back inside of unity. Select the camera here, go to the camera follow component and drag and drop this player to this target slot. And now I'll show you how this offset works. If we go up there, here you can see the z axis of our camera is set to minus 10. So in the offset we will also change this to negative 10. If we hit play now. The camera actually follows the player. Let's try and change the offset a bit. Let's go back and disable this maximize on play. Let's hit play here. So now inside the play mode we can actually play around with the offset values. We just need to change the y value of our offset here. So let's change it to whatever value you like. So, And we will just copy this. And let's exit the play mode now. Now we can go back to the offset and change the value back to whatever we saved. Now if we hit play here, it looks just fine but we want to see what lies beneath our player. So let's give our player a bit more space. Go back to the offset and let's change this to 0.1. Let's hit play now. And yeah, this will do just fine. Instead, we will just increase the scale of our ground. So let's go back, select the ground and let's scale this up. 
Also, I'll change the offset to 0.15 and let's hit play here. Cool, so everything seems to be working just fine. Now our player can travel pretty much everywhere in the scene. Yeah, so now let's exit the play mode and let's increase the size of our ground here. Also, I'll just duplicate and place a couple of platforms in our scene. Now let's go to our to-do list here. So we are done setting up our environment and also the camera follow. So the next thing we need to do is the score system with pickups. So let's head back inside of Unity. And in here we will go to the hierarchy, right click here and let's select UI, canvas. Now it will create this canvas and also this event system. So inside of the canvas let's change this render mode to screen space camera and assign this main camera to this render camera slot. Also enable this pixel perfect. Now let's go to the UI scalar mode and select the scale with the screen size. Here we can give the reference resolutions you are working on. I'll type in 1920 by 1080 and also change this match to 0.5. You can always change the screen size here. I have already made this one here. To make a new one just click on this plus sign here. So let's right click on the canvas here. Go to UI and let's select this text here. And now we have this text here. So let's double click on the text. Press Alt Shift and this top left corner here. So it will change the anchor of our text to the top left corner here. Let's scale this up and zoom out and scale this up a little bit more. And here we can change the text. I'll type in score and some random number here to see how it will look in the game. Let's go down and enable this best fit and it will select the best size for our text. Also let's change the alignment here. And I'll make the text look bold. You can also change this max size here. And here you can change the color but this looks just fine. So let's rename this text to score. Now our UI is somewhat ready, but we want this to update to our current score and for that we need to first set the actual score system. And for that we need some sort of pickup. Let's go back and go to the assets menu and select this import new asset. And I'll just use this star from one of my previous projects. Now let's drag and drop this star into the scene view. It kind of looks very big. So let's select this star sprite here and we will change this pixels per unit. I'll change this to 300. Let's hit apply here. Okay, so our star is much smaller now, but we want it to be a bit more smaller. So let's change the X and Y scale to 0.5. And now it looks better. Let's place it here. And also let's rename this to star. Also we need to add some collider to it. So add component and here we can add this polygon collider to it. But I think circle collider 2D in this case will do just fine. So let's try to focus on the star and yeah it looks just fine. Also inside of the circle collider make sure you enable this is trigger here. Let me just show you what happens if you don't. So let's hit play and if we try to hit this star we can actually collide with this and that is something that we don't want. So let's go back and enable this is trigger here and try this out now. As you can see we can pass through the star here. Now we will destroy this star if, we, if the player passes through it. So let's go to our player and create a new script. 
and let's call this one player script. Create an add and this will take care of all our score system. Let's place it inside of our scripts folder also and open it up inside of the Visual Studio. And in here let's make an integer value and let's call this score. In the start method we will default this to 0. And let's go to the top and include another class here unityengine.ui Down here let's make a text variable let's call this score text and in the start method let's type in score text dot text and set this equal to let's say score colon the actual score this will set the score text to this and now if we go ahead and test this out Okay, we also have to assign the score text to our player script here. So let's drag and drop the score text inside of this score text slot here and let's hit play now. Now you can see the score is set to 0 by default and we want to increase this when we collect these stars. So let's go back to the player script. And in here we will call the on trigger enter 2d method. And we will give it a two uh, collider 2d parameter and let's call this one hit. And in here we will check if the collider that we have hit has a tag of let's say star. And in that case we will just destroy the game object that we hit so hit dot game object and we will also increase the score by 10 so score plus equals to 10 and yeah also update the score text here and we can just copy and paste this here and I think that's all we need to do so if we go ahead and play, play now and let's try and collect the star here so if we collect this star nothing happens oh because we haven't set the tag yet so let's go back and select the star here go to tag add tag here and let's call this one star select the star again and assign this tag to our star so if we go ahead and hit play now and if we try to collect this star the score actually updates so yeah that's pretty cool. So now let's exit play mode and randomly scatter these stars in our scene. I'll just quickly do it. Ok now let's try it out. Everything works perfectly fine. Now we can collect all these stars and our score actually updates. So yeah that's pretty cool. Let's go back and make a new game object in the hierarchy and call this stars. Reset the transform on this and let's place all our stars in this stars game object just to keep things nice and clean. So now we are done with the score system and also the UI. So that's it for this video and in the next one we will look into player death and also restarting the game. So until next time see ya.